Because of the coronavirus, we are all living through a potentially traumatic event. I'm going to show you how to cope, recover, and potentially grow from this trauma. I'm clinical psychologist Dr. Alan Matu. I've made a lot of videos about mental health during the coronavirus outbreak, and one question I keep getting from you is how to deal with the grief and potential trauma of this outbreak. So we're going to explore all of that in this video. Most people think of a psychological trauma as something involving violence or life or death, something horrific. And while those things can definitely be traumatic, it doesn't really capture what an actual psychological trauma is. Psychological traumas are seismic events that literally shake you to the core. They challenge fundamental beliefs that you have had about yourself, about other people, about how the world works. Trauma can lead to powerful emotions or powerful numbing. And the longer you experience trauma, the longer it can change the way you view yourself and it can lead to other problems like anxiety, depression, and substance use. There's a lot we don't know about how coronavirus relates to trauma, but we can draw on similar experiences from the past, like the SARS outbreak, as well as look at research from other large-scale outbreaks mass disasters, financial collapse, and isolation and quarantine. The first area where many of us are likely to struggle with are beliefs around safety. How safe are we? How safe are other people? How safe are everyday situations? And one of the things that was found in research related to SARS is most essential workers were struggling with safety when they became afraid of potentially infecting their friends and family. And where I see this playing out in relation to trauma and the coronavirus is our essential workers. Did they feel like they got the protection they needed working in hospitals, working in grocery stores, working in delivery, working uh, doing takeout in restaurants? Did they feel like they had the protection needed to protect themselves and feel safe in that situation? Did they feel like they were still being safe when they were coming home and being with their family. I see a lot of problems coming for hospitals that didn't have enough supplies and essential workers that felt like the, their employers were letting them down. These are people who are going to be more likely to develop trauma and at risk for trauma. Related to that, people are probably going to struggle with issues of trust. How much can you trust yourself? How much can you trust other people? How much can you actually trust your local, state, and federal government to help you in this time of crisis? A lot of people who go through trauma really struggle with issues of control. They might try to control themselves, other people, their environment, their emotions, way more than is healthy. And this is particularly difficult with the coronavirus because all of us are trying to control ourselves and our contact with other people. We're all trying to control the environment. And many of us are experiencing financial stressors or financial complete collapse of our businesses, of our savings, of our income. And all of those things can contribute to this feeling of being completely out of control. Something else that's very common with trauma is a change in your self-esteem, thinking there's something wrong with you or that you contributed to this traumatic event, that in some way it's your fault. And while that's probably not common with, with coronavirus, what coronavirus is likely to cause is stigma. People who have been diagnosed with coronavirus might experience some type of stigma after it or think that there's something wrong with them or that they can't talk about this experience that they've had. We definitely saw that with SARS. There goes my backlight, whatever, I don't care about that. But we saw this with SARS and that actually further isolated people who needed more support from other people to recover from that, not only physically, but psychologically. Trauma from coronavirus is probably also going to impact beliefs about intimacy, about being alone by yourself, about being home alone, about being close to other people. Some of us are alone too much by ourselves and we're really struggling with that and we might not feel like we can do that long term. And some of us have no time alone. We're sheltering in place with a lot of other people and we feel like we're not able to get 
any escape to get that time alone to ourselves that we need. Let me hopefully pop up a diagram right now. I would actually draw this out for you, but I've run out of paper because that's the world we're living in right now. A traumatic event happens and all of us plummet in how well we are functioning. And especially those who might have been struggling with their mental health before are even more likely to really plummet in their functioning and just be at survival mode, just getting through the day. Now, if you stick around here, th these are the people who are most vulnerable to developing post-traumatic stress on the other side of a trauma. Most of us though, the good news is, most of us are going to be resilient. We're going to bounce back and recover, get to a place where we were before this trauma happened. That's the first thing I want you to remember from this video. Most people are resilient. Most people will recover. Some are gonna grow, and that's called post-traumatic growth. This is when through the struggle with a trauma, you actually have a new sense of who you are, your strengths, your abilities to cope. You have a new sense of who is important to you in your life, a new sense of meaning and purpose. You're charged with a greater sense of direction in your life. That is post-traumatic growth. The first thing you can do to recover or grow from this is to solve immediate problems. When we're in a traumatic situation, it creates a lot of new challenges for us and we're also um, under a lot of stress. So both of those things make it very difficult for us to get through the day. New problems, but a lot of stress. So we're not very good at solving those problems. Stress can really restrict your attention and make it hard for you to figure out possible solutions. So this is the first place where we have to start. And so we all have to get very good at problem solving. That means describing what the problem is, what you need to do to get out of it, what your goal is, to brainstorm a lot of solutions without even judging them, to try out those solutions, see if they're working, and start over from scratch. Let me give you an example from my life. The first few weeks we were in this crisis, the biggest challenge we had was how to deal with our daughter. She is two years old, wants all of our attention, and uh, it made it completely impossible for my wife and I, who are now all at home with each other, we have no childcare, to try to get through the day and do all the different things we had to do. So, state the problem. What is it? Well, my daughter wants all of our attention. What's the goal? I need to occupy her time with things that really invigorate her, engage her, and keep her away from us. What are possible solutions? We went through so many things from um, more TV, Disney Plus, uh, Blippio, I think that's the dude's name on YouTube, um, spending some special time with her where my wife and I are um, doing tag team where I spend an hour with her, she spends an hour with her, um, talking to friends who are teachers, um, talking to other actual uh, people who are in the same situation, finding activities that work for her. And what we have done is we've tried out each of those things until we're able to get to a place where we're better solving this problem. This is a situation where none of us can get through it alone. It's just not possible. So if you're someone who needs help, think about who in your life might be in a position to help and then reach out to them. This is how we can address some of the financial stressors where people have lost jobs and they don't know how they're gonna pay rent, they don't know how they're gonna get food. Um, if you're in a position where you need help, you need financial help, ask someone for support. And if you're in a position where you might be able to give financial help, offer help to other people, and solve the problems of getting through today, of getting through tomorrow, of getting through this week. Don't think about what happens months down the road. We have no idea. Solve some of the problems that you're experiencing today. The next thing we all need to do is learn how to calm our mind and body. 
And the reason for this is trauma can really create a lot of intense emotions. So we need to do even more than we usually do to calm our minds and body. And the other thing with the coronavirus is our normal routines are completely disrupted. So the normal things that you would do to go through the day you don't really have them anymore. And we're all in these situations where we're trying to think what to do hour to hour, and our minds don't make distinctions between small decisions and big decisions. We're, we're having to make a lot of decisions. It's very stressful. It's very overwhelming. We don't have our normal routines. So we all need to create routines that help us to calm our minds and calm our bodies. I've got a video on uh, quick ways to reduce anxiety. That covers a lot of these types of skills. I've also got a video about how to deal with coronavirus anxiety. That goes through some of these skills as well, but I will emphasize it again. You need to limit your media. You have to limit how much news you're watching. I recommend really getting your news twice a day in the morning and later in the day. Make sure you're getting some local news and it's best if you can get it in an audio format so you're not seeing all the visuals because they're gonna get stuck in your head. They might create more anxiety. One emotion I'll get into that I haven't talked about in my previous videos is gratitude. This has been a big one for me that is helping me get through the situation. I'll talk about it in more detail how it is a little bit later in this video. But gratitude is this super emotion where it, um, it not only undoes negative emotions like anger and anxiety, um, jealousy, emotions that really restrict your attention. Gratitude is an emotion that expands your thinking, it helps you to be more creative, it up uplifts your spirits as well as the people who receive your gratitude and anyone who's there to witness it. If you can get in touch with gratitude, this is a great time to send text messages and letters, emails, who sends a letter anymore, but um, send messages to people who have really made a difference in your life and when you are meeting people who are essential workers, please, please, please extend your gratitude towards them for what they are doing to keep our country going, to keep people healthy. The thing that's helped me most to calm my mind and body is getting one of these foam rollers. I've noticed that I have experienced a ton of back pain in these last few days. I think it's one because my daughter wants me to lift her up for long periods of the day, which hurts my back because she weighs a lot more than she used to as a baby. And number two, I'm not getting all the outdoor physical activity that I usually got. So all of those things have been, have been impacting me. So I've been just rolling on, on this at night, every night, and it's been helping me so much. It's relieved a lot of tension in my body and I'm sleeping better as a result of it. And if you wanna learn more about more ways in which you can, um, cope with your emotions and calm your mind and body, check out Rock Steady by Ellen Forney. It's a really great illustrated guide on how to regulate your mood, regulate your emotions, and to deal with difficult thoughts. The next thing we all need to do is to connect with people who help us in a way that is helpful to us. And I know this is difficult right now since we are all so isolated from one another, but we have to find ways to get through that isolation because not only will it help you to problem solve and it will probably also help you to calm your mind and body, but it's also going to help us to grieve. We all have something to grieve right now. Some of us have lost loved ones to the coronavirus. All of us have lost a way of life um, resulting from the coronavirus and now the uh, sheltering place and quarantines that we're all having to experience. Grief is about finding a way to experience some small part of that loss and then also getting relief from it and some distance from it. So we all right now need to find just one person in our life who is a good listener, who can listen to a little bit of our pain, but also help us to cope with that and get a little distance from it. That is the type of grieving that is really gonna help us to get through the situation. And it's not about helping us to let go and forget 
what has happened and the losses that we've experienced. It's about being with someone who can help us to remember those losses and bring them into our life in a way that we can tolerate right now. This is really important for people who have the coronavirus right now or who are recovering from it. Past research has shown that people who had SARS really struggled with the stigma resulting from it and they need that connection to other people and to be able to talk about their experience to overcome that stigma. If you want to learn how to do this, check out my video on how to listen like a therapist and check out this resource from the Jed Foundation. It's a great step-by-step uh, -step process on how to help someone who might be struggling. Just recently, we did a FaceTime with uh, one of my daughter's first friends in New York and uh, it just was really great to connect with um, people I care about in New York especially since New York has been so hard hit by this. All of the skills we've talked about up to this point, solving problems, calming your mind and body, getting support from other people, these are necessary ingredients to recovery, to resiliency, to bounce back after a difficult thing has occurred. But there's a core ingredient that is necessary for growth, for fundamentally changing after a traumatic event and changing for the better. That core ingredient seems to be to make meaning of the situation that you have lived through. It's about bringing clarity to all of those intrusive thoughts you're having, the conflicting thoughts, the challenges to your beliefs, finding some clear new narrative that guides your life. At home, there are steps you can take right now to increase your chances of growing from this experience. And the main tool that you have is to write, is to take 20 minutes a day for four days in a row and to write down how this traumatic experience has impacted you. How has it impacted your views of yourself? of others, of the world? How does it relate to who you thought you were, who you are right now, and who you hope to be in the future? How has it impacted your relationships with other people? Did I already say that? I don't know if I said that. How does it relate to your childhood? How does it relate to your future? How has it impacted your values? And to revisit that question for 20 minutes a day, four days in a row. That will help you to deal with all of these thoughts and to get a little perspective from it. You don't have to journal forever. You can just journal for a short period of time. Just four days can be enough to help you get through some of these difficult thoughts. And you actually don't even have to write down. Uh, you can record yourself talking. And if you don't like listening back to your voice, use a service like Otter to, tr uh, to transcribe what you are saying. You can record yourself on video. You can uh, write a song. You can make music. You can create art. Anything that is going to help you to form some type of narrative. The thing that helps here, it's not catharsis. It's not getting out your emotions. The thing that seems to be necessary here is forming a new narrative, creating a story that brings together all of these thoughts you're having. If you're um, really struggling and your emotions are up and down, it might not be the right time to tackle one of these meaning exercises of writing or narrating or creating art or any of those kind of things. The first priority is really to take care of yourself. The second thing to remember is this can be very difficult. This can be a difficult process and it's going to open up a lot of difficult thoughts and emotions. That's okay. It will get better as you do this. However, if you're diving into material that's too difficult, back off and focus on some other aspect of this traumatic event. I started doing this a few weeks ago. And the thing I noticed is what I was first writing about is how much anger I had. Anger at actually my daughter for making the days so much more stressful. Anger at just the world. I launched a new business 
two weeks before this whole crisis happened. I formed an LLC and I had lined up two months of speaking opportunities, of workshops, of uh, teaching opportunities. And my job was going to be making videos for all of you and teaching and sharing uh, different experiences across the country. And that was where I was gonna get all my income. And then poof, all of it was gone once um, sheltering place happened. As I continued to do this, um, I got to a point where I was experiencing more compassion, compassion for myself, um, realizing that it's you know there's nothing I could have known about the situation, and it just was a bad time to launch that kind of business. But also compassion for my daughter and compassion for parenting in this situation. That like no one is meant to parent a toddler in isolation without any community support when you can't really go outside. These are extraordinary situations. So really being honest and compassionate with myself about the limits of what I can do on my own in this situation. As I was writing about this, I started to remember how difficult it was for me and my wife to become parents and how fortunate we felt to have a daughter because there was a long time where we thought it would never be possible. And gratitude also for my wife for being in a situation where she is able to work from home and we have some income because a lot of people don't have that. The last thing I want you to know is none of this is a linear process. Living through a trauma, recovering from it, potentially growing from it, it's very wibbly wobbly, timey wimey. You can experience forward momentum and then setbacks. You can experience both growth and struggle and pain at the exact same time. It's a very messy process. So what I do want you to do is just focus on one thing right now. What is one thing from this video that you can focus on right now to help you get through the situation. I am bouncing back and forth between all of these different things, but I hope, I hope, I hope this video gives you something to do right now that's gonna set you up for the best possible scenario on the other side of all of this. And if you want more help with your mental health during the coronavirus, check out this playlist that's popping up right now. I've got a lot more resources for you. If you got any value out of this video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider sharing it with someone who might need this information. And if you want more videos that make psychology fun and easy to understand, and you wanna join our Mighty Psyche community where we celebrate mental health together, consider subscribing to The Psych Show.